Well, let's get going and I'm sure we'll have some more jump on with us, but um, thanks to everybody who's joined us today. My name is Greg Summerhays. I'm the president of the South Valley Chamber and we're grateful to partner today with World Trade Center Utah and Impact Utah to bring you this um, important forum. Um, part of our goal and our focus as a chamber is to help companies to grow, um, to expand their business and to achieve you know, a higher level of success. And we do that several different ways, but one of those ways is, is through training programs and um, our signature program. We have a business institute where we offer several different academies to help businesses achieve the skills that they need to better manage and run their businesses. But our signature program is called the Key Bank Business Accelerator Academy. And through that program, it's a 26 week course that, that businesses go through. It's, we tout it as kind of like a mini MBA program for businesses. And at the end, they walk away with a three year strategic growth plan that they can implement, manage, and um, we track their progress over the, the three year period. And the results that we've seen have really been tremendous. Um, uh, just to share a few with you, our companies um, after about one year after graduation are seeing about a 29% increase in their growth. Uh, normal small business will experience about a 9% increase over a, a year period. So we're pretty, we're pretty pleased with the results that we're seeing. And one of those areas that I think some companies look at and other companies maybe don't is going international and looking at that market and understanding that market better and growing their business that way. Lots of times we think of, oh, how do we get to more of Salt Lake County or more into Utah County, maybe all of Utah. But um, in today's world, we really need to look at uh, the international market and how businesses can offer their services and products uh, to the whole world as a growth strategy. So we're excited uh, that World Trade Center Utah would join us today to share the resources that they have and help kind of educate and guide businesses on how they can enter this market and be successful. So um, thanks everybody for joining us. Um, I'm gonna turn the time now over to Jim Porter and he's gonna kind of take it from here. Thank you, Greg, I appreciate it. And uh, I'm sure all of you know how critical a resource the South Valley Chamber has been to companies during this time. Uh, thank you, Greg, for all the work you're doing. We're glad to be able to partner with you and, and with Impact Utah on this event. Um, you know, this is a small enough group where I really think everyone should have their cameras on. Um, you know, uh, maybe you're not, you're not quite quaffed up for the day, but if you are, please turn on your camera. We, we really, <laughs> Jeremy, we lost you. <laughs> um, but we, uh, um, you know, this is meant to be kind of a round table. During normal times, we would all be sitting in the same room. There'd be an opportunity for you and me to talk face to face, for you to ask questions. Uh, of us right during the middle of our presentations, I would suggest or, or uh, I would ask each of you as you have questions or if, if you want to comment and jump in to please jump in. Feel free to do that. Um, we could go half an hour today or we could go an hour today and it all depends on um, uh, your interest, what your questions are and, and how we might be able to, to help you. So please feel free to, to, to do that. Hannah, do we have slides for today? Perfect. Will you, will you throw those up? Let me provide a quick introduction to World Trade Center Utah for those of you uh, who don't know us. Um, and maybe I'll start with uh, who I am. My name's Jim Porter. I'm the Trade Services Manager for World Trade Center Utah. Uh, that's all that really means is I'm here to help Utah companies to export. Um, I do rural outreach and uh, market research for companies and a number of other things that we'll talk about today. Um, uh, that's kind of my portfolio. My background is, international, is in international business. Uh, it's where I got my degrees. I worked for the Shingo Institute for a little while, uh, and, and now I'm working for World Trade Center Utah. So let me tell you a little bit more about who we are. Hannah, if you'll jump to the next slide. Uh, you've probably heard the you've probably heard the World Trade Center name or, or of the World Trade Center brand before, but um, when I talk to people, mostly they, they associate that with the buildings back in New York, right? The, the towers that fell on 9-11 and are now being rebuilt. Well, the World Trade Center Association that we are a part of uh, includes more than 325 members in more than 90 countries. Uh, it's a fantastic worldwide association of various organizations who focus on, um, who focus on trade development, um, on, on economic development, on uh, real estate, and, and, a, and a few other issues. Um, but the, the World Trade Center Association is a fantastic resource that we can plug into uh, here in the state of Utah because we have a World Trade Center here. 
Uh, here in the state of Utah, our World Trade Center, we're a private nonprofit that contracts with the state of Utah to handle all their international business development activities. And uh, our mission, as you see there on the screen, is to lead Utah's international business development and help to, to elevate Utah's global status. And that's uh, a nice way of saying that we're here to help Utah companies find and expand into new markets and to attract foreign investment back into the state of Utah uh, through a number of different channels. But we work with partners like the South Valley Chamber, uh, like others in state and local governments to try to elevate their, um, their efforts to a global level uh, or to help their members to think globally and to, in, in the long run to succeed globally and to become part of, of larger global supply chains. So with, with that in mind, <clears throat> I want to tell you a little bit specifically about the services that we offer um, uh, to help you to export. As a small business, you might be thinking that exporting or, or, or selling internationally in general is a daunting task. Uh, a lot of companies that I talk to don't know what they don't know, and they recognize that there is sometimes a large gap in the, the there's a large knowledge gap that has to be crossed in order to, in order to export successfully. Um, and I want to I want to undercut that uh, idea a little bit because Utah is actually a fantastic place uh, to start exporting from, and you'd be surprised how many of our our small businesses do it. Utah, on the whole, exports more than than seventeen uh, billion dollars every year. Um, a fair amount of that comes from our mines, but also a fair amount of that comes from our small businesses. Uh, eighty four percent of the exporters in Utah are small businesses and about $5 billion in exports uh, out of Utah every year are, are generated by small businesses. Uh, and there's a number of different reasons why Utah is a little bit more international than other places. Uh, let me take a step back. That $5 billion, in, let me put that in context. There are only two states west of Texas that export, um, whose small businesses export more than Utah, and that's California and Washington State. That means we export more than Colorado, it means we export more than Arizona, than Oregon, um, and, and other states that, that might have bigger economies, but, uh, but uh, don't necessarily have the same kind of um, exporting uh, intensity that we have here in Utah. And that's for a number of different reasons, partly because of the great resources that we have here in Utah that you can take advantage of, like the services uh, that World Trade Center Utah has to offer. And, and those are the, the services that you're seeing up in front of you that I, I, I wanna talk through because uh, we, we work with companies at all different levels. If you're a startup, maybe you're still working on your initial business plan uh, and trying to figure out how international growth might fit into that plan down the road, we can work with you. If you're uh, already taking international orders, maybe fulfilling some orders internationally right now, we have programs we can work with you to help you be proactive about exporting and pursue more growth in those markets. If you are an experienced exporter, if you know what you're doing, uh, and don't necessarily need the, the training or research to be able to pursue those, you can take advantage of our grant programs or the, uh, the excursions that we, that we organize each year to various trade shows and to markets across the world. Uh, fantastic resources. You can be part of this process or, or this, uh, this funnel or flow that I'm showing you here. You can jump in at any point. Um, we, we, are, we, we like to think of ourselves as an A to Z solution, but really what we can do is customizable to, what, to your needs. So what are those solutions or what are those things we can provide you? Well, the first is, is training. Uh, there's, uh, you might feel like there's a knowledge gap uh, between what you do right now in your business and what it takes to go international. Well, you can come and talk to us or our partners at, at the Salt Lake Community College or the uh, US Export Assistance Center to learn a bit about what it actually takes to export uh, if your company's ready for it or what it will take for you to be ready for exporting. Uh, how to think about market entry, how to manage risk and ensure that you get paid, uh, how to finance those exports, and how to ensure that your goods get across borders smoothly uh, and without risk of, of being uh, detained. Those are all, uh, those are all uh, uh, trainings that we can provide. And we do that in a, in, a, through, in a couple of different ways. One, and the first and easiest way is you can email or call me if you have a specific question, and I'd be happy to advise you on any of these, on any of these topics. Um, and so World Trade Center Utah tries to be a very accessible resource for uh, Utah companies so you can learn about these things. Uh, but we also have formal programs that you can take advantage of. If you're in rural Utah, you can participate in our export boot camps. 
that we organize around the state every year in, in the rural areas of the state. Those are two-day intensive export training programs uh, where we bring the we bring the the specialists that are here in a, you know along the Wasatch Front to you wherever you're located, help build a community of specialists around you and get you that essential knowledge that you need. Uh, but additionally, we run uh, different programs here in um, here in the uh, on, along the Wasatch Front or we support those. The first program I wanna highlight is actually out of Salt Lake Community College in partnership with the SBA and their Global Trade Center, which is called the, the Global Business Management Certificate, which is a fantastic 10 week course that you can take uh, to get you uh, to, to provide all the in-depth knowledge you need on exporting. It's a fantastic course. Uh, I took it, the course, and, and I'll say I learned a lot from it about some of the practicalities uh, that you need to be focusing on if you're looking at international markets. Uh, additionally, World Trade Center Utah runs uh, Export Tech, which is a six or a, which is a, a kind of a three three trainings over three months course that does something very similar. Um, uh, needless to say, there are a lot of opportunities to get the knowledge that you need. But let's assume you have the knowledge that you need. You you understand what it takes to export. It's part of your business plan, or you want to make it part of your business plan. What would you do from there? Well, you would come and talk to us at World Trade Center Utah about getting some market research. Uh, we can help you narrow down across the globe which markets might make the most sense for your product or service. We can also do deep dives into those markets that uh, we've identified as being high potential markets for you, help you understand what some of the obstacles are going to be, um, how you might need to adjust pricing or branding on your product or your labeling, what kind of certifications you might need to uh, uh, you might need to abide by, or what maybe some of the laws in market are um, that, that might affect how you do business. Uh, we can also help you to, to really tailor it down and, and help you with your decision-making process, right? If you've got five or 10 markets that you all think would look good, we can help you narrow that down to the one, two, or maybe three that you ought to start with uh, in your international growth and give you direction to, to help you plan for, uh, plan for international market entry and, and for that long-term growth. Uh, you know, as a, as a clear follow up here, we're, we can help you do the planning through our, through us and through, through our, <coughs> excuse me, through our partner network. Uh, we have a fantastic group of, of partners who are willing to provide uh, advice to you, expertise to help mentor you through the process as you think about what some of the effects might be for your company, how to forecast cash flow, set sales goals, goals for these markets, how to hire the right employees so that, um, so that you've got the, the skill base or the capacity to, to export successfully and to avoid the pitfalls that a lot of companies fall into. Uh, and that these are kind of the steps one, two, and three that we take with companies all the time. Um, once, you've, once you've got a plan in place, once you have a sense of, uh, of what you actually want to accomplish in these markets and how you can go about accomplishing it, World Trade Center Utah has, uh, has programs to help you get boots on the ground. And Nicole's gonna talk really in depth about uh, one of those programs, the STEP grant, here in just a few minutes. Um, but I want to highlight for you the fact that uh, participating in, in, in international marketing or, or executing on an international marketing plan is not always a cheap prospect. And that's why there's financial assistance available to help you to do those things. Um, so, and that's what the STEP grant is for. There's also a rural business development grant, which is related to those boot camps, where if you're in rural Utah, uh, you can take advantage of, of those opportunities as well. Now, the, the last service that we provide uh, along this flow are those are the trade missions and the, the shows that we take companies to. So the, the trade missions are, uh, are focused on a single market or a set of markets that we'll travel to with uh, the governor, uh, with Utah's governor. We do usually two of these a year. Uh, when you participate in these, there's an opportunity for you to, to uh, take advantage of B2B matchmaking programs to meet interested customers or distributors potential partners in these markets that you might want to work with. Um, we host a, a set of programs, including embassy receptions, that you can bring potential buyers to or potential partners to, to, to boost your credibility uh, in those markets and, uh, and show that you, know, you mean business. But we also take companies to trade shows across the world every year. These are industry-specific uh, industry uh, organized events where companies have the opportunity to, uh, to market their products directly to people within their industry. Um, we usually have trade, uh, uh, trade shows uh, in, in aerospace and defense. We go to some of the big aerospace and defense shows. We go to some of the big outdoor product shows. 
We go to some of the big life sciences show. So if you uh, manufacture medical devices or on pharmaceuticals or biotechnology, um, you ought to come and talk to us about uh, about the shows that we uh, um, that we participate in, and, uh, and and likely could be valuable shows for you as well. Um, let me. Uh, I think we've got a, a question here, and Jeremy, if you want, you can just unmute yourself and, and ask the question. If not, I'll just read your question and, and go ahead. Uh, what I've got here is: Can you address the non-typical types of export if it applies, perhaps licensing or SaaS? And uh, yeah, so. Uh, software as a service is, um, in some ways, it's easier to export uh, or, or to market internationally. In some ways, it's more difficult. And, and let me tell you a bit why that is. So, you know, if you're software as a service, really what you're doing is you got to figure out um, how to how to get in touch with the right with the right people, with the right potential customers in market, and you've got to design the right kind of digital marketing and media. SaaS companies technically don't export. Um, so long as there's no, uh, there's no transfer of, of source code between, from country to another country, as long as uh, your customer in another country is, is using your service, which could be based in servers in the United States, that's actually, funny enough, it's actually not an export, though it is international revenue, and we will help you to achieve that revenue. Um, the trouble is that there are not, there are not um, uniform rules about, there are not uniform rules about uh, software um, or, or digital trade about how data has to be stored or if it has to be stored locally, um, where, uh, what can, what uh, um, data, what customer data can be used and, and what can't be used, how to make sure that that uh, customer data is safe, right? These are, all, these are all questions that get more complicated or more technical internationally, partly because there's no uniform rules around that. Now, there are trade agreements in place like the US-Mexico-Canada agreement, USMCA, that are trying to set a standard for those kinds of rules around the world, but they're, they're a long time coming. Um, so great question about SaaS exports uh, because they are unique in the exporting realm because uh, unlike product exports, there's, um, uh, the, the rules around them are not nearly as harmonized as, as they are for product exports around the world. Um, you know, I've, I think I've pretty much well covered how you can take advantage of what we have uh, at, at World Trade Center Utah. Uh, I, I point to a, a number of businesses who have participated in these with us and, and have, uh, uh, you know, and, and have benefited in the long term. Companies like Caddis Enterprises or ACT Aerospace or DPS Skis, um, Max Tech or others who, who we've worked with. But, you know, instead of talking about how they did this, why don't we just, why don't I stop? And let's, let's turn it over for questions. Do any of you have other questions that you want to ask me? Or Nicole or Greg? Hi, uh, this is Serena. I am an export compliance analyst with Open Gear um, here in Sandy, Utah. And um, I have a question about the resources available. Um, so we manufacture um, out of band management um, hardware for that helps you know companies be connected to the internet um and if their internet goes down of course we have cellular so they can they can fail over to cellular so um because uh we have we have cellular um technology a lot of the problems we have aren't exporting from the united states but type approvals um importing into several different countries because kind of that, that's completely not harmonized. It's, it's per country, really, and they set their own rules. Yep. Um, what are the resources that, um, that you have in regard to that? It's kind of market, market access. It's kind of involved with that, but it's, it's a little bit more specialized. Uh, do you work with Shelby Dyack at the U.S. Commercial Service at all? No. So well, here's what I, I would tell you to do. I've got, uh, I, I'm a generalist. And when it comes to compliance, as you well know, Serena, it gets pretty deep and complicated. Yeah. Uh, and, and we're a team of seven and, and do our best to represent, you know, all of Utah businesses, uh, you know, markets around the world. But uh, what that means is that we're, we're often generalists. So what we do is work very closely with the federal partners who have, who have offices in these markets specifically to help with questions like this. And that federal agency is called the U.S. Commercial Service. Okay. Um, Shelby Dyack is our U.S. Commercial Service Officer here in Utah. 
And what I'm going to do after this, if you will send me your email, I'll make an introduction from you to Shelby so that she can put you in touch with your partners in those markets where you're having uh, the, the most pain points when it comes to import compliance. And her team can help you to, uh, can help you to uh, navigate those issues. And in many cases, they can actually advocate on your behalf to the customs agencies in those markets uh, to help you with those issues. They're a fantastic resource. So uh, that's probably the best place you can go uh, for that kind of a question. All right, thank you. You're welcome. And hey, Jim, just to jump in, um, Shelby's contact information is later in the slides. So we all- Oh, good. Yeah, so. so you can reach out to Shelby directly. So and I will also um, recap all the resources, Shelby's email address in a post event email that everyone will get in your inbox later today. So you're gonna get bombarded. <laughs> so don't you even worry about getting the information, we'll get it for you. <laughs> We'll fill up your inbox. Any other any other questions about exporting or about the services that World Trade Center provides? Yeah, just another quick question. If if you are exporting again with services, if you want to if you want to export a type of a specific service that you think would uh, translate internationally, you've been successful with that service, um, and it's a it's a it's a soft touch or it's something where it's in it more of an in-person or you need boots on the ground. Is that something that you could address also is, or does that not fall within your, your caveat? Yes, we can help you figure out what some of the obstacles are going to be in market, what some of the regulations you're going to have to follow are. Uh, that'll all be done through through secondary research. What we'll do from there is depending on the, the service that you want to offer, I'm going to put you in touch with our partner network. And we're going to get the right people to talk to you about how to, how to do that specifically. Um, I'm not an expert on on, on standing up an operation in market, even, you know, even a temporary operation to, to provide the service that you want, right? If you want to hire people in that market, that's a whole nother set of expertise. Um, and so what we do have and what we, what we do provide is that market of, of, of expert, that, uh, sorry, that network of expertise uh, of people we can work you through. So um, come and talk to us. I'll get you some initial information about that. And then based on your follow-up questions, I'm going to send you to the right person. That's, that, that would be the process of how we'd help you. And I suppose, I guess, suppose whether or not that's covered in the step grant will be covered further on in these in the presentation. Yes, services are service companies can um, take advantage of the step grant. Not every service company. Uh, I think Nicole talked more about some of the eligibility requirements. I think, for example, consulting firms uh, don't. Uh, consulting firms aren't able to get the step grant, but I'll leave that to Nicole to talk through later on. Most small businesses, product or service oriented, are able to take advantage of those financial resources. Any other questions? Okay, then before I turn it over to Nicole, I want to talk a little bit about Utah's new Industry Resource Alliance. Is anyone from Impact Utah on the, on the, uh, on the call today? I was looking earlier, I didn't see anyone, and, and just scrolling through the list right now, I don't see anyone either. I was going to put someone from Impact Utah on the spot because we work with them so closely on this new initiative. Let me tell you a little bit about it. Uh, so starting back in January of this year, some of the, the, the various groups that help manufacturers across the state started talking about how we could better work together uh, to provide uh, both what we call top line and bottom line services to manufacturers. Top line services are essentially revenue uh, services that help uh, manufacturers grow their revenue, Bottom line services are uh, are all related about are all related to becoming more efficient or uh, you know improving your processes in such a way that uh, that it affects your bottom line right or it helps you with your bottom line and Impact Utah is one of the the partners in this in this alliance along with World Trade Center Utah the University of Utah's Manufacturing Extension Partnership Utah State University um, the Utah Manufacturers Association and uh, Utah's Advanced Materials, Advanced Manufacturing and Materials Initiative, UAMI. Many of you may know those groups, many of you may not. Um, in the case that you don't, and you're a manufacturer, you, um, it would behoove, it, you really ought to go and, and learn more about the resources that, uh, that are offered here to help you. Um, through CARES Act funding, the Industry Resource Alliance will be offering a number of services complementary to Utah businesses to help them, or and specifically to manufacturers to help them recover 
uh, from uh, recover from some of the COVID-19 upheaval and to and to work uh, without disruptions in a COVID-19 world. And so we um, are providing right now free training that you can take advantage of uh, that will help you understand how to come back, how to bring your employees back to work safely um, and in such a way that you uh, don't run as high risk of a COVID-19 related work disruption. Um, but uh, we'll also be helping, we can also help companies right now with uh, improving and, and defining their sales funnel, um, both domestically and internationally, uh, how you help develop awareness um, uh, of what you provide, what you sell, how, uh, how you can generate leads and contacts and how you can actually get leads and, and build strong customer relationships over time. These are all, uh, and, then, and then of course, uh, anything around uh, uh, quality improvement, lean operations, you name it, the Utah, uh, the Industry Resource Alliance can help you with those things um, and likely can do it for you right now uh, for free or at a heavily subsidized cost. So I would suggest anyone who's interested in the Resource Alliance, reach out to me uh, or to Impact Utah, who is a sponsor of today's event. You could also go to uh, www.utahira.org to learn more about uh, all the different services that are available through the, through the Alliance and to reach out to someone who may be able to help your business with whatever you're dealing with right now, uh, including international business, if that's something that you're interested in. Um, so I'm happy to take questions on that, but I think what we'll do for now is I'm going to turn it over to Nicole to talk, uh, uh, to talk about the step grant in more depth. And at the end, I think we'll have uh, a moment for question and answers. Uh, and at that point, we can talk freely about whatever you're interested in talking about. So uh, glad to be able to meet you all today and look forward to answering your questions. Great. Well, thank you, Jim. Um, my name is Nicole, and I am the Director of Grants here at World Trade Center Utah. Feel free to, you know, during my presentation, if you do have questions, um, let me know. But here's my contact information if after, um, hopefully y'all apply for a step grant if you're eligible. Um, but here's my contact information afterwards in case you have questions. Um, so we'll go to the next slide. So at World Trade Center Utah, we have um, two main grants. You can find out more information. Here's our grant page. Um, our big grant here is called the State Trade Expansion Program, and that is our step grant. Um, and Jim spoke a little bit more about our Rural Business Development Grant at the beginning. If you're interested in that um, and joining us for an export boot camp, please contact him but I will focus today on the STEP grant. So the STEP grant is actually funded in part through a grant with the US Small Business Administration. And what it, the STEP grant is, it's really financial support for small businesses um, to expand internationally. And so what the grant can be used for, the first one that Jim touched on is our global business management course that's actually held in Sandy um, at the Miller um, campus out there. And if it's going to be held this fall, both in person and virtually, and the STEP grant can help cover up to two um, people from a small business that want to take the course, a great course, I'd recommend it. And plus there's STEP funding available to take the course. Another item that can be used um, with a STEP grant really are financial assistance awards. Right now, we're focusing on companies using a lot of non-travel activities, such as compliance testing. I have a lot of life science companies out there using it for their CE mark or using it for um, other compliance testing into a foreign market. If you are shipping goods internationally, the STEP grant can help provide financial support for that. Um, design of marketing media. I have small businesses using that to create brochures to enhance their website as well as make videos. So if you financial support for that as well. Um, market research, you can use it um, for funding the step grant for that. Also, a lot of companies right now with the non-travel are using it for website optimization and translation. If you're a small business and right now looking to um, 
while, while travel restrictions are in place, looking to optimize your website or translate it into a foreign language. Now is the time and the step grant can help um, support that financially. Other items, a lot of our um, trade missions and trade shows, they've moved to a virtual platform. And if you're interested in participating in any of those, the step grant can help cover those participation fees, which is a great option as well um, while you know we're in this. Um, yeah, so those are the main things that the step grant can cover. Um, I don't know if anybody had any questions on what it can cover, but really great opportunities to take advantage of it now. So um, if not, so here's a little more about the step grant. Uh, who is eligible? We're looking for small businesses headquartered in Utah. Um, we're looking, I know it was mentioned earlier, those that have products, services, those that are not eligible include consulting firms, law firms, um, CPA firms, and stuff like that. But if you're a small business, um, product, service, we've worked with a lot of translation companies in the past, um, and a lot of um, also great outdoor companies located in Sandy, Utah, such as handout gloves um, and stuff like that. And some will ask, okay, I get this award, but what's the catch? Um, there is a 25% match by the grant recipient, but what that means is that we just have to see that the company put some money towards the activity. But if you're already um, optimizing your website to go international, it's a great catch. Um, for example, if you got an award for 3000 we would just have to see that you spent 4000 on it. Um, but if you have questions about that, let me know. Um, the only other requirements are we ask for a survey and that's just to see how the activity went and then we follow up with you um, two years out just to see how the activity went and how World Trade Center Utah can further help you expand internationally. Um, the great news is the application is currently open and there's no fee to apply and there is funding left. So um, I encourage everybody to apply. The deadline, it's on a rolling basis, but as soon as the funds are used up, they're used up. Um, and the deadline is September 30th, 2020. So, um, a couple other resources I wanted to bring your attention to. We work with a lot of um, different uh, federal partners. One of the ones um, I wanted to highlight right now is US Commercial Service. Um, they're reducing a lot of their fees for their services. So I encourage everybody um, to reach out, find out more about it. It's just a great opportunity because of what's going on. Um, Shelby's contact information is right there, but reduced fees um, will only occur until September 30th, 2020. So I would jump on this sooner than later. So um, please, yeah, a great option right now for small and medium-sized businesses as well as large companies. Hi, Nicole. Mm -hmm. Do you mind, if, can we go back to the last slide? Yeah. Uh, for those of you who don't know, I, I, I explained the U.S. Commercial Service a little bit uh, beforehand, but when we talk about these, uh, the reduced user, uh, reducing fees for their services, um, let me tell you a little bit what some of those services are. So um, the services I mentioned to Serena earlier, the, the kind of counseling that they provide on various trade related issues, that's all free anyway, it's always free, but they do have a number of paid services. They're a cost recovery agency of the US government. So they do have to charge for hard costs. But uh, for some of these services, but those services include things like um, B2B matchmaking. And what, what means they'll, um, they'll learn about your company and what product or service you wanna sell. They will investigate, they will search in the market for companies that are interested in your product or service. Um, they'll vet those companies for you and they'll make virtual introductions between the two of you for free right now. And that's true through, I think, September 30th is the end date. Um, this is a fantastic resource that normally would cost you something along the lines of $950 for every five meetings or so that you get. Um, and, and so right now, the fact that that's free for small businesses is incredible. Um, we love that they're doing this. We're telling everyone that you should go and, and participate. 
Uh, on top of those matchmaking services that, uh, that they provide, uh, the US Commercial Service can do in-market research for you, which means they'll talk to people in your industry uh, to get a sense of whether what you're trying to offer makes sense for that uh, in that market. Um, they'll also do uh, international company profiles for you, help you to vet people who you've been talking to or reaching out to, uh, among a number of different services that they have. Um, not enough good things can be said about the U.S. Commercial Service. And I would suggest that everyone who's interested in international business on this call, reach out to Shelby um, and get a request in for a service before September 30th. Uh, because right now, there's no cost to you to do it and their services um, are high quality. Thanks, Nicole, for letting me jump yeah. in there. Oh, yeah. And if there um, is a cost, the STEP grant can help um, make up for any costs associated with getting any of those services. So the step grant can help cover that as well. Um, another thing is we do work with uh, these other federal um, organizations. So we, I work with them and have contacts. So um, more information can be found here. But if you work with them and want to, um, you know, me to connect you with them, I'm happy to do that. And we also let you know about all of the opportunities with these different um, national resources. And then finally, um, any additional resources, I encourage everybody to sign up for our newsletter. That's our website and it's up in the left hand corner. And it's great because you can learn about um, different webinars such as this one, any trainings we might have, um, our virtual trade missions. We have one coming up to Israel focused on um, the life science industry, as well as any of our other events. Um, so I encourage everybody to join that. And then we also um, are working on the Utah Rapid Response Team. And so there's business resources for COVID-19 and um, that's the website you can go to. And then finally, we just wanna thank working with our partners such as South Valley Chamber um, to help us spread the word about World Trade Center Utah and especially the STEP grant. If you do have questions with the STEP grant, and afterwards, feel free to reach out to me. Happy to jump on a phone call to talk to you more in detail. So hopefully I'll get a step grant from every small business out there looking to go international. Any questions? For either Jim, myself, Hannah. <laughs> Looks like we've got about 20 minutes left, so please ask your questions. Unless everybody's ready for the weekend. <laughs> you guys did such a thorough job. Look at that. <laughs> you did such a thorough job that you answered all of their questions anyway. Um, I just want to, you know, if, if somebody has a question before we sign off, we'd love to take those questions, but I just want to point out that Utah is rich in resources to help small businesses and WTC is a huge example of that. Um, we're pro business community and there are lots of ways to grow your company and if, if you're in it right now trying to go international or working internationally, lean on them for help. And if you're just thinking about it too, I would encourage the same thing. This is a, a unique opportunity and we've seen some, uh, Jim mentioned a few companies, but we've seen some companies that have gone international and it has really changed the trajectory of their business and they've achieved great success. And you don't have to do it alone. Um, that's the greatest part I think about all these resources is you have people to turn to to help you out. So I just want to thank Nicole and Jim, Hannah, the whole team over at uh, World Trade Center Utah, Impact Utah for helping us spread the word today. And I'll give you one last chance. If you have any questions, let's, let's make them known right now. Otherwise, like Nicole mentioned, you guys can reach out individually to Nicole, Jim, or Hannah and, and get those questions answered. So anybody have any last minute questions? All right, seeing none, we want to again thank um, our panelists. Thank you so much for your presentation today, for all that you guys do. Thanks everybody for joining us on the call. We hope you all have a great weekend. Um, get out and enjoy the outdoors. Uh, take care, everybody.